Grace and peace, everybody, and welcome to Sabbath School Study Group. This is part number three of our five-part series where we're looking at worshiping the Lord. And today we're going to talk about sacrifices as a part of worship. And so we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would speak to our hearts. Amen. When we look at what happens there in Nehemiah and Ezra and their worship, one of the things that was central to their worship was sacrifice. And sacrifice is not something that we really put on the top of our list today because of where we live. In 2019, at the time of this recording, we're in the new covenant. We don't have to sacrifice animals or things um, to affect our atonement or salvation. But it does not mean that we don't have the opportunity to sacrifice because the highest praise is the fruit of the greatest sacrifice. What we mean by that is when you look at why they sacrifice in Nehemiah chapter 12, the reasons why they sacrifice still exist today. It says here in verse 43, also that day they offered great sacrifices and rejoiced. Why? For God had made them rejoice with great joy. The wives also and the children rejoiced so that the joy of Jerusalem was heard even afar off. So they, they were so in it. They were so on fire that it could be heard afar off. They were truly grateful for what the Lord had done. And so they were giving a lot of gratefulness. They were giving the sacrifice of praise. So when you understand that, and when I look at this, I'm saying, okay, we don't have to give things or animals to show our sacrifice, but we can still sacrifice because we still have reason to joy. So when you go to John chapter one and verse number 29, John, when he sees Jesus, it says the next day, John sees Jesus coming unto him. And he says, behold, the lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. See, we've transitioned now our joy and how we express it from having to give an animal or a thing to the lamb of God, the one or the sacrifice of God who because of his sacrifice takes our sin and gives us his righteousness. That joy and our reaction to it is timeless because it is as if Jesus is doing it right now today. Now, mind you, he did it once and for all. The Bible says he saved us on the cross of Calvary, but the effectiveness, the meaning, the power, it's still as if it were even today, because first Corinthians five, seven says, purge out therefore the old leaven that you may be a new lump, even as ye are unleavened for even Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. He has been sacrificed for us. So just like in Nehemiah 12, when they sacrificed to show their gratefulness for what God has done. Jesus has been sacrificed. And so our gratefulness for what he has done should be, should be as present as is his sacrifice. It doesn't change. It doesn't waver. That has not changed. What has transitioned changes or what affects our sacrifice has changed. But now we don't have faith in what God is going to do like they had to. We have faith in what he has done. So how can we let the people who were basically celebrating a check, celebrating the credit of what Jesus was going to do, how should we let them outpraise us when we have been paid in cash? It has been done. It has been finished. And we're going to let them outpraise us, let them out sacrifice us. No, let's not make that mistake because the reality is the greatest sacrifice that a Christian can give is themselves. That's why some would even say the highest form of praise is not even a song. The highest form of praise is obedience. Simply doing what the father has asked us to do. Simply doing what he has willed for us to be. That's the best way to vindicate his will. The biggest way to prove that God exists is for him to live in our lives. It's not an argument or a debate. And what greater way to show that we trust his word by obeying his word. Remember, the highest praise is the fruit of the greatest sacrifice. And if we truly believe that Christ is our sacrifice for us, we'll live moment by moment with the, with the intent and the purpose, that same intent and purpose that we have in singing a song or that same focus that we would give at a practice to make sure that we quote, sound good. How much focus then should be given to being good, living good? Yes, yes, song is beautiful, song is great. But the greatest song and the greatest story that we can ever tell is how we live.